dance studio brings in all types of people. Um, people who wanted to dance as children or people who discovered dance later in life when they thought it was too late. Um, but what I did always appreciate, and I started dancing when I was 20, I was in college, I was not a youngster, the seven-year-old at the studio. Um, I always appreciated adult dance classes and loved to provide them. And we have several adult dance classes, ballet classes for adults, it's very popular. Um, but, and, and a lot of modern classes for adults. But that doesn't always mean that their desire to dance and their ability to dance match. So quite often, um, we find ourselves that the joy of the person that gets a later education in dance is about discovering possibly how to use their body for the first time in their lives. And often enjoyable and humorous to the instructor can be frustrating and scary to the student. And what I think I like the best about TR Dance Center is it doesn't matter if you fall down. Doesn't matter what happens. If you never do the right step, you're out there trying it. You're exercising. You're surrounding yourself by beautiful music. You're moving in a community of dancers. And really, that's the experience. Whether you dance like Barishnikov or you dance like you've got a peg leg, you really get the experience of that overall art um, uh, saturation, and I think that's a great thing. People love it. People can be frustrated. Uh, most of all, our adult students are the ones that stay the longest because they realize they're smart enough to get it and that consistency and their joy that they have while doing it never ends. I always tell people, even if you danced as a kid or you danced in college, you haven't danced in 20 years, come back. <laughs> it's a good the future of any arts organization is always planned well ahead of time. Um, our schedule for next year is already booked, which is wonderful, and we're very lucky to have that opportunity. Um, we continue next year with our um, uh, studio concert series, both one and two, uh, fall and spring, which is in the studio, Bed Jack Studio Theater right here at the TR Dance Center. Seats 120, a wonderfully intimate performance with state-of-the-art lighting. You know, he talked earlier about how we didn't have any lights as curtains. They were all borrowed at the time. Well, now, thank heaven, we have a fully stocked studio theater. Uh, we're collaborating, uh, collaborating again with the symphony this year. We have a great Christmas extravaganza going on, which will include the Virginia Children's Chorus, TR Dance, and the Symphony at the Roper. Uh, we're performing in the Tattoo. The International Tattoo has always been a great thing for us. We try to do every other year. Um, and our involvement with the Arts Festival will continue next year, which the Tattoo is part of. Um, we uh, have always been the company that people go to when they need things. We're performing at the Alley Awards next year, which is the Eight Cities Awards Ceremony for the Arts. And I'm lucky enough to host, which we're very excited about. Um, those kinds of things where we can reach out to the community and become a part of the arts community as leaders um, is great. The uh, uh, opportunities for a dance company in a, in a city this size uh, may seem at first thought not great, but it, they have been incredibly uh, generous with their ideas and their inclusion of TR Dance and vice versa. And I think everybody realizes now that collaboration is the only way to go. So the, the future is full of collaborations as well as our own uh, artistic endeavors. Um, and we're thrilled. How about Workshop Theatre Group? Uh, Workshop Theatre Group, um, this year we are, as usual, the three main productions starting all the way in September, going all the way to April, June. Uh, this coming year we are going uh, back to uh, the Edinburgh Festival and the Dublin Gate Festival. Um, we're opening with, uh, actually I won't say the name yet, this is in the works, uh, it, but it's a new adaptation uh, of uh, an older tale, um, mostly geared uh, to the gay and lesbian community. Um, it's something that, um, personally, I, I always think that you know, that part of the population, part of the population, um, doesn't have that much of a voice. Um, especially in this area. Um, so I have made it a, you know, it's part of what we want to do. And diversity doesn't only include um, different races, it includes different uh, ways of living. So that's how we're starting the season. Um, then, of course, uh, December 1st, we'll have our annual World AIDS Day. Arts, Arts for Day. Life. Arts for Life, um, which will be here at the Benjamin Studio. Um, and, um, through the year, most likely be our April, our April offering. Uh, we'll redo uh, Call Me Boricua because that will be one of the pieces traveling. Uh, that is the original piece. 
out of workshop theater um, by yours truly. Um, mm -hmm. But um, now we can only do it here, we did it in Indianapolis. Uh, we have one more engagement in the States before we take it to Europe. So hopefully that's great. Right. It's just, you know, one step. For our community to get involved with TR dance um, is very simple. Uh, besides being able to participate in classes um, or attending performances, which is a huge way of participating, no dance exists without an audience, so that's number one. Um, tell ten friends, bring them, come downtown and go out to dinner first and make an evening of it. Um, other ways you can get involved is through financial support. Uh, a dance company, any arts organization, is always um, looking for supporters, consistent supporters, to help support our dancers and their, their salaries and costumes and sets. So there are a million ways that money can be spent. Um, corporate sponsors are always welcome. That's one thing that's harder to build in this economy and we really look forward to it. Um, I think another way to get involved is simply volunteer, uh, whether it's setting up the theater when it needs to be transitioned from studio to theater, or coming in and sewing costumes, or um, volunteering for a mailing, uh, to send out a mailing. Um, all of those things are valuable. And I can tell you that a little bit of help from a lot of people makes an enormous movement. Um, and that's really been how this place has functioned. A lot of time spent in small increments from very generous people who care about dance. So. Just stop by. <laughs> um, Come check on what we have to offer. And if you really want if you have some time to give to people that use it, um, we can uh, make you up with all strings, <laughs> yes. setting up, yes. um, costumes that you said, you know, I have to say that up to this point was like they, they really <laughs> I would say yeah they put a Hispanic to work. But that's okay. I, I like making costumes. I mean, I'm a good gay boy. Uh, um, but there's always possibilities for absolutely everything. Um, if you're interested, just stop by. Say, hey, we want to help. We're here. Our website is trdance.org. It has a link to the workshop theater group. And there's all kinds of information online to find out whether you want to be a part financially or whether you just want to participate. Our performances, our press is all listed on there. The company and all their members and backgrounds. So. Anything that lights your fire, we will, we will. Being an artist, I mean, your art, it has to be your life if you're willing to make that choice. Otherwise, there is, it's a hobby. <laughs> and it's wonderful to have it as a hobby, but in order to fully participate, to fully develop yourself as an artist and to create new work, um, your life is your art. Also, you realize by, uh, years going by and the ticking of time and experience, relationships with people and dances and other art forms that they are all one. That when your life is, is uh, when your art form is simplified, when it's, when it's brought down to its bare essence, it also affects your life in that way. It makes you realize what's important in life, what's important in your relationships. It makes you realize that material goods aren't always necessary, that to shed the layers and to really take what you need. The essentials of choreography and the essentials of life are really what it takes. Um, and they're all interlocked. To love your art, to love a person, to live your life to the best and fullest is what our job is. Um, and there's no better job than that. Um, love, life, and art. Wow. Um, the performing arts for me are ephemeral. You know, we work really hard for to create a moment, a moment that hopefully inspires others. But we accept it as that. It comes into an idea, it makes us work, it makes us live, and then we have to let it go. Um, just like that beautiful flower at the end of, this, of the branch. Um, to create a life, or to be lucky enough to have a life of all those little moments uh, makes me appreciate much more of what I do. Um, I am of the compilation of all those moments that I have helped create. And love then becomes that person to which <laughs> you share all those tiny little moments that make your life interesting, or not interesting, or crazy. Um, and I guess
guess that for me, that's, that's, that's one of the big things of our partnership. We collect all those little moments, we share them, and we let them go. Sharing is the key word because no art exists unless you share with the world. No love exists unless you share with someone. No life exists unless you share. So that's a, that's a good way to live. <laughs>